Uh, ben Lichtenstein, thank you for that report. Welcome back, friends, to Trading 360. It's time for our 360 round. We're focusing on the social media stocks with our panel. This group, if you put in many of them, I just put in uh, Meta and Facebook, and um, which is Facebook, uh, Twitter. Uh, we're watching that one. Snap, pins, many of them are, are around 52-week lows. So bring in our pros here. And joining us right now is Ali Mogarabi joining us equity analyst at Morningstar, and Melissa Armo, founder, owner of the stock Swoosh. Thank you both for being with us. So um, interestingly enough, Ali, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is the ad dollars and how important it is to have ad dollars uh, for the likes of Snap, for example. You are lowering your fair value on Snap and pins while maintaining your value on Alphabet, Meta, IAC, and Twitter. Why is that? Yeah, actually, uh, Nicole, we did that um, a couple months ago, and that was mainly because uh, that was mainly after Snap basically uh, lowered their uh, their guidance a little bit, and of course, after we saw further indications of uh, possibly a recession uh, from a macro environment standpoint. So when that takes place, as you know, historically, uh, when there's a downturn in the economy, you know, ad spending is is slashed. Uh, but I should make uh, I should make the point that. Uh, when it comes to digital advertising uh, during a downturn, it is affected a lot less than traditional advertising. So uh, things are not really that bad for, uh, for these players out there. They're not as bad as it seems. I want to talk more about that in a moment. Melissa, um, some of these names that we're looking at are, as I said, at or near 52-week lows. Are there any that are buying opportunities? Do you feel like they've bought them or more room to the downside keep falling? Well, it really depends on the overall market. One of the reasons that many of these stocks in this sector are down is because everything's down. The market's down this whole year. For the first six months of the year, the market's been done nothing but pretty much sell off. And even the rallies like we get today and yesterday and even Friday before the holiday weekend, they really never get going and they never go anywhere. I would wait to see what happens on earnings season, which starts in a couple of days next week. Again, Facebook is out towards the middle of the end of July. And a bunch of the other ones are out, too. Twitter is going to be dependent on whether Elon Musk buys it or not. Because if Elon Musk does not go through with that sale, the stock's going to tank. And actually, he's trying to renegotiate it now for a lower price. So you've seen all of these things in severe downtrend. Facebook, remember the earnings that it had last quarter, it absolutely plummeted. And the first quarter of the year, too. But you remember, we're going into the election season in the fall. Facebook's going to get a lot of ads with the election season. They're going to get money in for that. So we could see a better end of the year, not this quarter, but the end of the year for some of these stocks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so waiting a while here. Ali, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, I agree. For actually, uh, some of the names such as such as a Meta and even Alphabet, of course, which has YouTube, I think those are very, very attractive names for long-term investors. So in the short term, whether you're whether they're facing uh, obstacles such as the macro environment or even, for example, what Apple is doing specifically related to to, to Meta and, and, and Snap, uh, we do think that this is only short to medium term issues and they can actually be resolved uh, in the long run. Uh, you're talking about companies that continue to generate cash, uh, especially Meta and, and Alphabet. Uh, Pinterest, of course, is uh, generating positive adjusted EBITDA. Um, and Snap is actually working its way towards, uh, towards gap profitability. So all of these companies we think are moving in the right direction, except for the time being, they are facing some obstacles out there, such as the macro environment and some of the things that Apple um, is, uh, is currently uh, conducting. Yeah, so Ali, you mentioned some of these names as names that are good plays for the long term. Would you start dollar cost averaging now, or would you wait until the end of the year to start buying in? Well, that that, re that really depends on what type of investor um, we're talking about. So uh, I would say, you know, for long-term investors, again, uh, we are very, very confident for uh, regarding names such as the Meta and, uh, and Alphabet. Uh, so um, whether it's whether it's starting out now or, you know, a couple of quarters down the road, that's up to the investor. But in the long run, uh, we think they will generate some uh, some very attractive returns. And in some of these um, subscriber growth, I guess there's still a big possibility for more subscribers, even abroad. Melissa, um, you were taking a look at the group overall engagement, subscriber growth, daily active users. Um, all of these things are the metrics that people are watching, but it's the ad dollars that are very concerning. Which, which chart um, grabs your attention? Are you looking at the charts or the group overall, Melissa? 
I'm looking at the charts. I'm also looking at the group over log because you cannot ignore the market. When the market sells off, mm. everything typically tends to go with it. And the market could be lower. The market could be lower. They're looking at raising interest rates how many times before the end of the year. And it's all going to affect all the all the sector. But again, long term, if you're in some of these things long term, Facebook isn't going anywhere. Google isn't going anywhere. If I had to pick one that I like that I thought was strongest of all the picks we've talked about today, I would say Google simply because it's held up better than anything else. It is expensive right now. But the fact is that's held up better than anything else with the downturn we've seen in the last six months. And of course, they have YouTube. YouTube is not going anywhere. You have a problem, though, because once we get into a recessionary period, if that if we're in one now, it's going to get worse. Whatever the case may be, companies who, who, who place ads onto these platforms may spend less money on ads. So that could affect their, their bottom line. But I think we're going to see going into earnings season in the next two months when all of these things report. They may say, oh, we had a good quarter last quarter, but our expectation for the next quarter isn't so hot. So that may have a negative effect on the yeah. stock for that particular moment. Yeah. So Google would be the one with YouTube that you would pick. Ali, is there one that you would pick over the others? You certainly are concerned about what's happened with the Apple privacy changes. Um, is there one that seems to be a stronger player or standout? Yeah, I mean, the Apple privacy changes um, actually impact um, basically, you know, Meta, a, a Snap, and a, and a Twitter and Pinterest uh, a lot more than, than of course, uh, an Alphabet or, or Google. But I, I do agree with Melissa. I, I, you know, our, my favorite name actually right now, which I think is most attractive, is Alphabet. Uh, and it's not just the, the fact that they have YouTube. It's also the fact that they haven't yet even started to monetize the, the Google Maps. Uh, and on top of that, they've actually uh, done very well in diversifying their overall business when you're talking about their cloud side of the business, which is pretty much a business to business, a, a B2B uh, type of uh, uh, segment. So, uh, so that, it, yeah, I, I think Alphabet is, is very attractive right now. And then the second one would be Meta. Uh, I think the market is discounting it too heavily. I think these guys are coming up with, turn, uh, with workarounds um, around the, the Apple uh, data, data privacy policies. Uh, they're working more closely with advertisers, or I should say directly with advertisers, so they can actually utilize their own vast first-party data along mm -hmm. with the advertisers' first-party data. So they've taken uh, a lot of steps that will yeah. probably see the results of those in a couple of years down the, down the road, or I should say a couple yeah, of quarters interesting. down the road. Yeah, interesting. You both like Alphabet Google. I mean, I see just the most recent call, Evercore ISI, put a target of 3110 with an outperform. So that was uh, today. Nice to see you both. Yeah. Ali Mogarabi, you thank you for being with us of Morningstar and Melissa Armo of the Stock Group. Thank you, friends, for being with me here on Trading 360 every single weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Nicole Petalides. I will see you at 2 p.m. Eastern for the watch list. Do join me then. But keep